Jenny, what are you? You're so, like, exotic looking. Dan it, Dan it. Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it. I like that. It's gonna be my theme song. Dan it, 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 Batman. I am really picky about what shows I choose to watch on Netflix because, let's face it, a good show will completely take over your life. Are you still watching? Yes. What else is there I should be doing right now? Literally nothing. I love a good coming of age story and with the controversy that came along from a certain line in the show digging at Taylor Swift, which we'll get into a little later, I said, hmm, let's see what the fuss is about. Before I get into my thoughts, let me set the scene. Virginia, or Jenny as she prefers everyone to call her, is a 15 year old girl who has lived a rather unorthodox life, moving from city to city, state to state with her mother Georgia and her brother Austin. Who child? These names. Her mama really tried it. I mean, it's kind of cute, but annoying at the same time. Growing up, a relative of mine had a girlfriend named Dawn. She had a daughter named Summer, and Summer's cousin name was Autumn. I was always curious as to what Autumn's mother's name was, but I was too afraid to ask. Dusk, maybe? I don't know. Anyways, Georgia is running from a dark past that we get to see play out bit by bit throughout the season. They move to a town in Massachusetts where life is supposed to have a bit more normality for a change. No random men in their lives that Georgia meets suddenly falls in love with and becomes consumed with. Oh, wait. Okay. Where there are no problems in school fitting in. Uh, mm. Okay, let me... Hmm. Okay, finally having a group of friends to call her own. Jenny can... Oh, gosh darn it. How do they keep slipping back into these old habits? Well, for starters, Jenny the self-proclaimed outsider, as soon as they move into the new house, there's this boy next door that catches her eye. Which, he's a cutie, so I don't blame her. I mean, if someone's attractive, who cares if sparks fly in five seconds or five months? Life is too short not to go after what you want. Get it how you live. However... Comma. This is where my first problem starts, and we're not even 10 minutes into the first episode. You see, Jenny has already told us that her mom had her as a teen, and because of this, she's been getting the hardcore truth about the birds and the bees since she was seven years old. One of the few things that she admittedly admires about her mother is that she has control when it comes to affairs of the opposite sex. But somehow, some way, she completely loses sight of this and loses control with the first boy she meets. I get it. Young people have raging hormones and they don't think before they act. Heck, older people have raging hormones and they don't think before they act. That would have been a good excuse had she not made it a point to tell us her history with the knowledge of what happens when you open the cookie jar. Then I thought, well, maybe she just wants to be the opposite of her mother. You know, relinquish that control and just let things be. But ultimately, wouldn't that just be a 360 leading her back to the path of teen motherhood? Like her mother? I don't know. But Jenny and her choices got on my nerves. However, comma, my biggest problem with the show that had me like, girl gone, is that they tried to make fetch happen, but with racism. What do I mean by that? That is a good question. In the first episode, driving into their new city, they make a stop at the gas station. Jenny is pumping the gas. Georgia walks out of this gas station and a cop is passing by. She tenses up because she's on the run for some reason or another, which we don't know why yet. Meanwhile, Jenny is side-eyeing the cop because he is racist. At least she thinks so, or she knows for sure, but she's unsure. Is that racist? That was racist, right? <sighs> okay, let me start off by saying I love the fact that we are living in a time of heightened senses to what black people and people of color deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. We're slowly addressing issues instead of acting as though they don't exist, but this show is forcing it and it's so cringy. Being a black woman myself, I know what it feels like to be uncomfortable around law enforcement. However, being uncomfortable simply equals being alert, not mean mugging a cop. Like you gonna do something. Uh, we don't do that. And secondly, she's biracial. To be clear, 
all people of color collectively know what it means to be racially profiled. However, comma, we're not going to sit here and pretend racially ambiguous people get treated the same as someone who is obviously black. If they wanted to make this a more relatable moment, they should have had the cop question her, you know, nice car you got there, you live around these parts. Have Georgia come out, a moment of displeasure, boom, we've established racial tension. Yeah, I know it's cliche, but you get my point. But no, instead they try to have subtext and it completely falls flat and it comes off like disingenuine to me. They try again to establish racial tension when Jenny's teacher singles her out, not for being the new student, but for being less than because she's black. You know, if you don't understand what's going on in class because your lack of education is fine, we can put you in a dumb class. Or the, I'm gonna make it seem like I'm not being racist by choosing another minority to win the writing contest, although you had the better essay. Now, these were not bad attempts as things like this happen all the time, but I was still stuck at them trying to make fetch happen in personally I just didn't connect with it. The argument with her boyfriend minority to minority actually worked because there was already tension from the writing competition and there's definitely a division between minority groups in the real world. I mean you would think we will all be in this together but it just doesn't always pan out that way. I give them an A for effort on that one. Then there's the woke black girl who's like let's be friends because we go to a majority white school. At first Jenny is a little confused. From earlier we see that at her old school there were a couple of black kids but again mostly white. And the only information we're given about her time at the other schools is that she doesn't have many friends and she's always the new kid. Usually as black people, we see somebody else that looks like us and we feel a little bit more at ease. Like, okay, I can adapt to this environment. Jenny being biracial, she's constantly navigating both worlds of being both black and white. So it's understandable that it wasn't an inherent, finally, someone who looks like me reaction. The problem for me doesn't come from Jenny as this develops is the friend. And no, it's not her trying to include her and make her feel welcomed. It was this moment right here when she sees her at the Halloween party, looks her up and down and asks her who she's supposed to be. And when Jenny tells her Britney Spears, she's like, hmm, note it. Um, excuse me? Besides the fact that black people love Britney Spears. That's our southern partner, Britney Spears. This was the perfect moment for subtext. She could have given that head nod that says, I see and I'm not impressed. Instead we got noted. Girl gone. Perhaps the biggest gripe I have with this show's attempt at commenting on race is the relationship between Jenny and Georgia, but not in the way you might think. You see, one of the issues in the black community as it pertains to interracial relationships is the lack of knowledge of our culture and subsequently this then trickles down and affects the offspring of said relationship. A mouthful, I know. Georgia, to my delightful surprise, is actually knowledgeable. She knows that her daughter doesn't have the same walk in life as she does, and she makes it a point to make sure her daughter knows that. Other than her being ready to go up to the school to handle her butthole of a teacher for discrimination, there was one line in particular that told me she gets it. A line that I've heard some rendition of my entire life. How many times have I told you not to let anyone touch your hair? Oh yeah. Let me give context. So Jenny and Meng, the name they chose for the group child, are at this school lock-in shindig and they have on the same outfit. So they're like, oh, let's all get the same hairstyle so we can look cool in our pictures. Well, the hairstyle is a high ponytail, no problem. Except Jenny has curly hair. Now, what does that mean? She can't wear a ponytail? Of course not. But it does mean she has to go through a few steps before she gets to that because whether you have kinks, coils, or curls, black hair is a process. But instead of her saying, you know what, how about we just wear our hair down or I'll throw my own hair in a ponytail. She sits down and lets this Caucasian lady attempt to put her hair into a ponytail, knowing that it wasn't going to end well. Now you embarrassed. And whose fault is that? Yours. Because guess what? Your mama told you not to let anybody touch your hair. Could have been avoided. Now, it'd be different had her mom not kept it real with her or if she'd never put a comb through her own hair. She knows it takes a little more work. So yeah, I'm not saying that race shouldn't be talked about. I just think it could have been shown a little differently. And speaking of showing things differently, we all know that Taylor has had her share of men. We know this because she tells us every time she releases an album. And we're reminded by this by the media over and over and over. Good PR and it works in her favor seeing as though she's made millions off said relationships by changing heartbreak into profit. 
school. Here lies the problem. Taylor has been professionally releasing music since she was 16 years old. So we've seen her grow up. Part of growing up is dating and part of dating is seeing what you like and what you don't like. With that, guess what? It doesn't always work out. So to still be the butt of dating jokes after 15 plus years of being in the public eye and the joke is laughing at you and not with you, vilifying your character and meant to demean you, as if every other person on the planet hasn't had their fair share of dating and failed relationships. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty justifiable to call these people out. And it has nothing to do with the actor because we all know she's just doing her job. But it's like, come on, give the girl a break. With all that being said, I think it's important to note. I actually really like this show. <laughs> My favorite character by far is Georgia. I think they do a really good job of showing her layers and the different complexities and how they come to be. Jenny's friend group, Mang, though the name is god awful, I think it's a good depiction of what happens when you choose the wrong group of friends. And although they're not the best people in the world, you still feel for them in their personal struggles. The guys that Jenny goes back and forth with are polar opposites, and I think it's interesting to watch her navigate through that. The season ends with a bang, and I'm definitely ready to see what happens next. So with season two on the horizon, is Jenny and Georgia a show that I would recommend? Yeah, I say it's Blush Bunny approved. Have you watched the show? What are your thoughts? I'm curious to know. Do you agree or disagree with the things I address? Let me know. If you haven't done so already, make sure you click like, hop on over to that subscribe button, and hit the bell. Otherwise, YouTube will never show you my videos. <laughs> As always, I'm all ears. Until next time, bye.